All right, so everybody's got their questions ready. We got to give the impression that the room is packed. <laughs> it's just overflow. <laughs> Same room. You can just stand up there and um, put my medicine on. Huh? <laughs> <coughs> and just welcome the coaches online and and go from there. Yeah. Welcome, coaches, to uh, Glazier PGC Coaching Clinic in Atlanta. We're live. It's 9 o'clock, and uh, uh, we put together this little uh, question and answer uh, time so that you could uh, share with us. Uh, uh, Brad, what about the uh, commercial? Um, may do that later. You want to do that later? Yeah. Okay. Because... We had a little commercial going for the new Zone Attack um, uh, uh, project that's coming out, the course that's coming out. Hopefully, keep your fingers crossed, sometime in October, maybe October 31st. <laughs> Barely, maybe. We might have to make it by October, but certainly in time for you to use it this season. Um, uh, we're going to open things up and let you at least share an hour of Q&A with us. Um, and then we're probably going to continue into the wee hours of the morning. Just kidding. <laughs> so, I may be bringing, um, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still fighting a cold, but maybe bring some of these coaches up and let them uh, answer their own questions, okay, rather than, I know you get tired of my my beautiful face. Uh, after a while, even even something as attractive as mine gets old, or maybe it's just old. So, coaches, let me open up uh, with uh, any kind of question. We'll get started. Anybody? <laughs> most of you were at all the clinics, weren't they? or most of the. The ones that I did, great. Anything not, anything unanswered from there you want to start with? What's the most common mistake you see early when people are putting in? <coughs> the, the question, you want me to repeat the question? The question is, uh, what do, what's the most common mistake the coaches make when they're first putting in the read and react? And I would say the most common one is you, you go too fast. Uh, uh, go too fast in terms of, uh, rushing to put in more and more layers, I think, uh, especially rookies starting out, think they've got to get the, the every layer of the read and react in in order to be effective with it. And that's mainly because they don't quite understand it. Uh, I would probably much rather uh, just kind of boot camp, say the first three together, get a working offense, uh, something that will stand alone on its own. And then, and then start working from there. Now, from there, do I add more layers or do I stay there and go deep and start teaching and training all the scoring opportunities? I think there's about 24 in uh, 25, something like that, in those first three layers and just go deep <coughs> before I start going wide and adding uh, more, lay uh, more, more layers. That's, uh, that's something I can't answer. Because uh, I'm not there, I don't know the team. Really good, but I'm going to turn that answer over to. Uh, there's some veterans in here. How, how would you answer that? What's the most common mistake made on that first year? First year putting it in is that is that a good way or or just any time? Any time. Any time. Common mistake. Great. I want to turn that open to uh, anybody. <coughs> Anybody wants to take a stab at it? Yes. I'd say what I've learned from different years of doing it, uh, and what I really have to work on myself <coughs> is I want to stop it too much. Oh, that's excellent. That, so that's that's what I have to, that I think I get better at, but I still do it too much. I know I still do it too much, but especially putting it in <coughs> at the start. <coughs> So sorry. I'm going to find it. Okay. First of all, I think that's excellent. Keep going. Um, you have to <coughs> hold.
hold your wipe your tongue. You like to say right, make your list. Um, they can't. It can't feel to them. I do one of my practices, and I was like, if I was one of them, I feel like I was getting just told all the time, right? Just because I can see the mistake, make a note, right. come back and deal with it after. But you gotta let them go through the motion. You know, I'd like to say that I was the like uh, I thought of that, but really that comes from I, I remember when the player said, <coughs> "Excuse me." We were talking after, after you know, at the end of the day, we all had supper together. We were just talking about it, and, and you know, they felt good enough to be honest with me. I'm asking for feedback, and I said, "Coach, you stopped it too much." And we know what you're trying to get to, but when it, when it's time for us to go five on five, and we're trying to learn how to flow and do all things you're saying to do in this system, you know, learn how to create your own possessions and. Flow like jazz music, you know. Uh, it's yeah, it's the same system, but it's never played twice and all that. We're trying to do it, and you keep stopping us and correcting. We can't get a flow going. We can't get a groove going. We can't. And so, I started to try to say, okay, well, when they're playing five on five, I'm going to set a time. Okay, we're going four minutes. Whatever. We're going three minutes. We're going ten minutes. I don't know. Set a time and shut up and get my list and make my notes and let them play and let them clean up their own mistakes because they're going to do that in the game, you know. And just make, and if it's, uh, I mean, it's real easy to categorize these things. Is it okay? Gee whiz, we still got guys, and girls that are passing and not cut, okay. Well, that's just a reaction to what I gotta do, you know. Or, or they keep missing. You know, this kid dribbles at this kid. This kid cuts, and I would really like that kid to post up, and they're missing it. He's missing his strength. He's filling out the perimeter one. He should be posting up. Okay, so tomorrow this isn't some layer of the redirect. This is just how does he learn to play to his strengths? And look, I want Joe to go on and fill out, but you, every time you cut, I need you to post up. Well, what, well then you got to teach my leg whip, then you got to teach, right? And then there's another category that is just pure player development, you know? Gee whiz, I can get an example. Hey, there's circle moving on dribble penetration, but the kids aren't ready to catch and shoot, you know? I got to work on their shot prep and getting them ready, eager receiver. Catching with a, you know, catching with uh, their feet in the air, blah blah blah. Suddenly, these what you got to work on. It was real easy for me to categorize these things and uh, and be building tomorrow's practice, just watching watching them play. So I think that's huge. And the last team I was with, not most of the last team I was with, same common mistake, coach. This is what we're talking about with the pretty practice. Like some things, it's a stage. It's not you're always going to let it go. It's just what stage, what stage of the process are you in? Some things, just let go and keep with the big picture. Okay, so he's not cutting hard. All right, we're going to correct that. But I don't need you to stop the flow and give me a ten-minute lecture on you know, on cutting hard. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let them play through it, and one of the coaches, uh, I was talking to him about um, one of the methods. Now, it, it did kill the flow, okay, a little flow, but one of the massive methods I did early on was I taught all the reaction drills <clears throat> with three players and one ball, okay? Pass and cut, right? Three players and one ball. Be to post and cut, fill, one Everything, every, all the basic reaction drills that you need. <clears throat> and really, there's only about, you can do it with about 12, 15 drills, something like that. You can get just about everything, okay? And, uh, and then we would start playing. So we used those. I would stand at the half line after they're taught, and I'd pull up stopwatch, have my note card, and 
Pass and cut. Go. One minute. Okay. Okay. And now it's already been taught, so I don't have to teach the drill. You know. Feed the post and cut. Let's go. Lake the cuts. Go. Boom. And there is no break. There's no water. There's no nothing. They're just from right there. Immediately, someone's in the post. They're feeding, cutting, filling. Post is choosing lake or cut or hit the inside out, right? Then immediately, dribble at. Very good. You know, immediately, safety valve or natural pitch. They're driving, choosing, right? And we're going, and in about, if you're doing a minute for each one, it took about 15 minutes, sometimes 20. And they're soaked, man. They're just, it's like, we got to get a water break. We got to take, we can't keep that game speed up that long, okay? But we reviewed the whole offense, right? You follow me here? And my reward for them was, okay, we'll play. If you guys can do this with precision and no screw-ups and get in a lot of shots and passes and do it all correctly, we will play. Now, if you mess that up, we're going to drill some more. I don't want to have to start teaching you how to feed the post. They hate it. You know, they, just, they wanted to play, right? <clears throat> so I dangled that as a carrot. So if they did that 15 minutes really good, well, take your break. Five on five, we're going. Now here, here here's how I handled screw-ups back there. Uh, by then, uh, this is not the first day of practice, okay? This is a couple of weeks in. You know? We're ready to play, I think. So we start playing in some example. Some kid feeds the post and doesn't cut, right? I blow the whistle. And see, and really, this is how I do it. Man, I really thought we, we, we knew the Laker cut thing. Guys, I'm so sorry. Three, three players, one ball, Laker cut drill. Let's go. You know? And they all got to run and get a ball, get three players, and, okay, let's go. Uh, we're going to have to review that one because Joe didn't, he fed the post, didn't cut. So I'm so sorry because I really wanted to play, you know. And I played that apologetic kind of thing. And suddenly there's peer pressure, you know, because they wanted to play. And I could see them headed to their own goals, and they're mumbling, hey, you know, Joe, you better cut. <laughs> I'll stop play again, all right. And we'd, we'd go, and then I'd say, okay, if you think you guys got that when you feed the post? Yeah, we're supposed to cut. Yeah. Okay, now let's play again. And then we'd, we'd just go and play. No lecture, no punishment, no how many times have I told you this? Just, hey, stop. We got to, okay. Someone drove. We didn't circle up. Dang it. Hey, get three balls. They knew it right away. I just said, get three guys, one ball. Joe, you got him in a little peer pressure, really good. But later on, as, as I did this more and more, even that will kill the flow. So I got, I started favoring more towards, I'm just going to, those drills, I'll do it after. At the end of the four minutes or five minutes of them playing five on five, then we'll get water, and then I'll say, look, we still can't do this, we can't do this, we're having trouble with this. Let's go drill this a while. Get some reps, and then we'll go back and play. Uh, so I think that's really, I think that's good. I, or I think that's a mistake, a common mistake made by coaches drilling for drilling for mastery right away. Uh, it, what it reminds me of is uh, I taught math for 20 years, and uh, there was a this Chicago method of teaching math that said the theory was. But kids learn their math in review. They don't learn it the first time. They learn it and it trails, mastery trails. And so what they would do is they'd still stick to a schedule, but every day they're reviewing part of part of their exercises was reviewing the last week or two. And the last week or two. And when you test the kids, you'd find out. When you test them, yeah, they didn't get the new stuff, but the old stuff. They were mastering it pretty good. And I really think it's a good analogy for, for, seems like if you're working on layer six, layers one, two, and three are looking pretty good because you've had so much review, you know, kind of dragged behind. Great. Good question. Anybody else? I'd say we probably went without defense for too long. You went without?
playing with, without putting defense on it too long. Even if it's restricted defense and there's offense involved, she, I mean, that's what it's Even with guided. Yeah, because that's, that's a big jump. <coughs> it's five people inside the area. Right, right. So what would you suggest? What would, you, what would be your suggestion? I, I think start by, we've done a couple things. So instead of putting five defenders out there, maybe put three, especially when you're throwing past a guy, and then try to find that player that doesn't have a defender on it. That's the easy way to do it. And then, you know, don't let them touch the ball. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think so, man. There are there are ways to play live and just kind of truncate the rules, you know. And I did this last week with the team, and <coughs> we got boy, they were highly frustrated at first, but they got the message and started working on it. And it was you know the drill. It's a we call it the flexion game. It's live. However, offense cannot drive to the goal. It's the only thing. Offense can't drive to the goal. Offense can pass, cut, and dribble out. We're working on those, okay? So, which means we're working on the read line. And, and, but what the way I did this one last week was offense gets five possessions in a row, and then we switch, and defense gets five possessions. However, defense can score. Every time defense deflects the ball, just knocks it out of bounds or steals it, they get two points. Now, the offense, I gave twos for two-point shots and threes for three-point shots. But I gave them four points for a layup. Okay? So they're really motivated. Now, that way, see, if the offense sagged off, I mean, I'm sorry, if the defense sagged off, the t offense could still shoot three. Okay? But... The defense is not going to score that way. You're just going to, if you play too safe, you're not going to score any points when you're on defense. Okay? So, and if you got to switch the score a little bit or pad the score a little more to get the, what am I trying to do? I ask the players out, I say, what, what do you think I'm really trying to do with this whole giving defense points? You say, well, you're really wanting us to get out there and pressure them, aren't you? I said, that's right. I want to see if your teammates will use the reading line, can use a dribble lap. Can, can handle pressure on the perimeter. That's that's why I'm messing with the score, trying to get you guys to get out, reward you to get out there and not, and let the offense learn how to fill empty spots, how to use a dribble out, how to pass it. Well, it's still live, Coach. I mean, there's still a live aspect to it, right? But it's not just a pure scrimmage. Yeah. Really, really good. Anybody else, common mistakes that uh, – Hey, or maybe, uh, how about this? Let's chase this rabbit. If you could do it differently, if you could do your first year over, read and react, compared, you know, to what you know now, what would you do different? I spent a lot of time with younger kids trying to introduce the post, and it just wasn't happening with the little ones. <coughs> so we finally just scrapped it. We basically just did pass and cut and dribble at so you dropped, just dropped to feed the post thing, yeah. right? Little kids, right? Absolutely. I think, look, they're, they're going to, if they can just move the ball east to west, there's two ways they do it. They pass it or they dribble it, right? And that's layer one and layer two. <coughs> and then start training them. When is there a good time to maybe drive real estate? And good grief, if you could do that with little kids, yeah, that's enough. Learn spacing, that kind of thing. Uh, that's good. You know, and I want people to hear that. I want co new coaches to hear that. Oh, wow, we skipped a layer. Really? Yeah. Yeah. You can. You can skip layer four, dribble penetration, if you need to. But look, I do it all the time. I did it last week. You know when? We did pass and cut, and I immediately taught them back screens. Well, that's layers, what, seven? I immediately taught them back screens because I did not want the cutter here, pass up hill on this player. I didn't want this player going back this side because these, these players wanted to penetrate, and I wanted to show them, look, I want you, once you get here, you can back screen this player, back screen this player, back screen, and take their place. Or if there's a post in here, you can screen for them. 
I just don't want you going back there because on this cut, on this cut, this guy has a chance to rip and go right off your tail, and there's no defensive help down here. And, and if he doesn't know, I'm going to start training him to uh, look for that real estate. You know? So I taught back, you know, technically speaking, I taught back screens out of order. I would do that with the youth. Because at that point, they can never screw up again. You can't mess it up. It just cleans things up, a back screen does, you know. A replacement screen, yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that too. And I think with the youth, the other thing it does is it, it introduces that there is a decision to make in that box. Right Not there. that I have to go. It introduces that there's the decision box. In so the first end. decision. Yeah. Right? That's excellent. Yeah. And it's not just, well, there's, they might say, well, there's only one. There's really not this. There's only one decision. Backswing. you got to figure out who you're going to backswing. Right? Who's play? I've introduced it and called it a replacement screen with really young ones. And just say, look, you get here, you can replace anybody you want. Whose spot do you want? Well, I want this. Well, here's how you take it. So at a higher level, when you're, or, or high school level, mm -hmm. um, one of the things we had trouble getting back screens with when we told them to replace that is going actually to the spot versus trying to catch that person in motion. Can you can you talk about that a minute as far as you know rather because you try and if you try and get to the decision box and then run to a spot by the yeah. time the action is starting on the side, they already moved off that spot and we had some some frustration with our players that they could. They go up there and there'd be nobody to back screen. Like, let's say, <coughs> here we go. This player passes this way and cuts, right? Now that means though that spot's empty, so all three are going to be moving to fill empty spots. Yeah, I run up on that. And this player thinks they've got to back screen at the spot. Is that what y'all know? No, all you got to do is call their name, and that'll stop their movement that way, and they can take that back screen. And look, that's tough on the defense. You know, this is a good thing. You know, you don't want to wait for them to get the spot and then set the back screen. Call it, catch them in motion, and take the spot that they would have gotten to. So if you take the back screen, they go, okay, now you go and fill their spot. And you've replaced them. Yeah, I think that's really tough. In motion. <coughs> yes? I think one of the mistakes I made, I tried to run too much four out, three out, realizing later that out of the five out, my post players got more post ups and better post ups, more buckets around the rim. From five out, and they really did in three out or, or four out. They can get better. Why, why do you think that's the case? I want to. Yeah, I think it puts more pressure on their defender because their defenders are used to being in the lane <coughs> all the time. And when you put them on the outside, you drag them out, you run them through screens, pin screens, you know, yep. whatever kind of screens. And it puts pressure on their defender. They're able to step in and seal that defender easier. I think you get easier buckets for them. You know, I've answered that. You know, the way I've answered that was some, let's say the blue player's really good in the post. So their defender, like you said, they're out here on the perimeter, right? So the question is, does this guy know how to help and recover on the perimeter? Do they ever put him in or her into those drills, first of all, right? But the other one is, I've asked this, I've never gotten <clears throat> I've never gotten an affirmative on this. Have you, so I'll ask you again, have you ever seen, been in a practice where there is a defensive drill that says, we're going to learn how to stop the ball from being fed into the post from this action. I dribble at this guy, and this player cuts, and leg whips, and posts up. Have you ever seen a defensive drill that says, this is how we're going. I've never, I've asked that everywhere I've gone. I've never seen a drill 
Well, look, if no one's working on how to keep that player from getting the ball in the post starting on the perimeter, then why don't why aren't we doing that right. offensively? I think that's kind of it's what you mean. You know, you could it's real easy to get this player back inside. I started with kids that had been in a different offense and they traditionally played in the post. And they Just started there, right? And you know, I was trying to keep them comfortable. But now that they realize, you know, our, our best post player has realized a pin screen is the best way to get an easy bucket under the goal. And and now he he's every time down the floor we're looking for an opportunity to set pin screen. He loves to see teams play zone. You t- right. He knows I'm gonna get laid. I'm gonna get the ball. Yeah. You know, that's the post, right? Or that's the player you want inside, right? Yes. The moment that pass or dribble is made, this player needs to be pinned. And if they learn that, then, oh, okay, so here goes the skip pass, and now they're inside where they can do their dance. I mean, the first time the ball gets away from them, and on the weak side, leave the perimeter, go nail somebody, call it, and suddenly you're inside. And again, how many teams work on defending someone getting open in a post from a pin and skip? Only those that play where you're at teams, you know? I had, I had one other thing that I, yeah. I would change and do differently in, in the install. I did a lot of the teaching with no defense. Yeah. I used a, a lot of the guided defense. I think I used too much because, like, the four actions on the field. Um, the four scoring opportunities on the field. Yeah. My guys could do all of those as long as they knew what the defense was doing. Uh, but when it got to live, I, I think I took a lot of the decision making out of it. I would put more live defense on them and make them make those decisions of when to curl, when to shoot, when to use momentum. <coughs> so that was one of my mistakes. Yeah. So why don't we? I'm serious. So why don't we do that? I think I've got an answer. I wouldn't be asking that. And you know, why wouldn't the coach go to live sooner? Why would? Yes. Um, I think maybe because you're more concerned about teaching them the movements and where to go. Um, I don't. I didn't do that so much after I played um, in college. My coach taught me reading the game. Yeah. So we went to live stuff pretty quickly. But as a player. I knew that also they would need more, but um, yeah. and you don't have, you can teach them uh, as they go. Right. <laughs> See, I think coaches think it's going to look ugly early, yeah, too yeah. soon. Like, yeah, they're not ready to go live. It'll fall apart. It'll look, no, we need to drill some. And I think you just, back to that ugly phase. Right. You might just have to go on and get live early and, you know, put a little pressure on them, put them in, in the furnace, let them see who can do that, who can't. No, that's, that's really good. Um, I also started doing, um, when they do five on O, um, as a coach, I would guard one player and I would say, okay, now this player has to score. So I would just guard that one player, and that way they have to figure out the line. He's dribble at, he's on the um, green O, B line, that go, or dribble penetrate, kick it out. So I would do uh, I like the heck out of that. I'll tell you why, because you can actually focus on one defender and what they're doing, because there's only one defender. So it's live. It's just that's the only player that can score. Ooh. You know what this smells like to me? We have color codes that we use. You know, you, you, if you've watched any of the DVDs, you know the color codes I'm talking about. Like green means green means go, we're turning into a foot race, don't set screens for anybody. All right? Red means set as many non-ball screens as you can. The post screens, back screens, pin and skips, right? Purple is for a post. No one has a green light to shoot until the post has touched the ball. So I don't know how you get the ball. I don't care how or who you get into the post or how you get on the ball, but no one has a green light until the post touches, right? Black is for ball screens. I want as many ball screens as possible in one possession, right? And the last one, this is what that smells like to me. Golden, golden boy or golden girl. Gold run means... We got to get Ron his shot, right? And I've never thought about doing that. We go five on one. One's guarding Ron. 
we got to figure out how Ron likes to get, where does he like to get it? Does he like did it off of screens? Is he a catch and shoot kind of guy? Or does, does, does he like getting it so that he can drive? We just need to create real estate for him. Uh, you know, do we need to just, or does the ball need to be in his hands? Is that how he, I don't know. I don't know what kind of game he's got. Or does he need to be inside? Maybe we don't ever pass him. We dribble it and we get him inside and let him, right? Or we get him inside and then we, we don't feed him pass uphill. He screens for us and we, and he shapes up and gets isolated, right? But that might be, just be a really good way to start teaching a golden girl or golden boy. You know, some players hot and you want them, or some players got a defender that's got four fouls on <laughs> you know, and we want we don't want anybody taking a, anything other than a layup until we try to take it to that defender. When you <coughs> did that, what were your defensive rules? Um. Well, I, I was the always coach. Down you were the defender. So I was the defender. And so I know what my players would do and how they score. And so I was doing things just to help them recognize that. Yeah. So it was on me. That's excellent. I just can't do that anymore. I, mean, I, I got more artificial joints than real ones. So I can't. <laughs> so we got to find another way to say I When she said it, the, what I thought is in your list before, and you were like, Ron, Miss Reedline three times, she can go and go over the read line every time with Ron. Until, so oh, that's excellent. start figuring that out, right? That's and excellent. And the other players yeah. helping them, too. Like, right. It's read line, read line. Oh, that's right. really good. Yeah. So, oh, that's excellent. That's, that's game time applicable, because if you only have, like, one shooter that can really shoot on your team, you're golden person. Absolutely. It comes to game, they've got to get that guy. Absolutely. Control. That's why you do that. Yeah. Yeah. Let the defense deny them everywhere. What do we do when our best player? That's good. He's excellent. I can't remember where we were with our questions. We started chasing some rabbits down different trails. What would we do different? That's what we were doing, right? What would we do different if we knew what we knew now? Anybody else? Yeah, I I would just because it made a big difference with me in my third year, my turn, your turn. Uh, whose turn is it? Whose turn is it? And for some of the players that I didn't believe, I, I knew they knew where to go, but I really didn't believe they actually right. knew it. Right. When I switched mm -hmm. to my turn, your turn. Right. They all of a sudden <coughs> clicked, and I was like, they went from being a player that I never counted on getting a basket to being a player that I probably count on getting six to eight points. Were you the one that was telling me this earlier today about my turn, your turn? That was it. Tell me, was it someone did? It might have been you. Here's here's the situation they were growing up. They said that because they saw this. This was a game clip we used in, in one of the sessions today. Here was the situation. Yeah, this player dribbled at this player. This player cut and decided to set uh, a screen for the post. This player is filling the empty spot, yes? And their defender went over the read line, but they didn't cut. They were one spot away from the ball, but they didn't cut. And the reason, now they eventually did cut. But they, this player, the red player, waited on this screen to see if this post was open. And they weren't. They didn't, the ball did not feed the post. This player filled up. That's when the player cut. They got it to her. She shot away. And the coach, I thought it was you. I can't remember. But they came to me and said, yeah. when I, was it you? Yeah. When I started explaining to them the concept of whose turn it is, they stopped cutting, even though that's the rule, the lane is filled. It's not your turn. It's their turn. Let them finish that action, and then if you're still overplayed, cut, because now you've got your turn in the lane. Was it you? Yeah. Yep. And we watched that. You had a clip. Yes, I had a clip. What, what is my turn, your turn, your turn? 
uh, is I want to test you. Is that okay? See, I think we, we could test players with this. I'll test everybody in the room, okay? Let's do this. This is, I thought about, we've been thinking about making a test for certification, okay, really. And so how do you test this? Well, uh, this player passes. Whose turn is it? What color? Red. 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 It's, it's not his turn to catch and shoot, catch and drive. It's the cutter's turn, right? Okay. Uh, how about how about this? This player dribbles at this player. Whose turn? Green. Yeah. This player's turn. Okay. They're not open. Whose turn is it? Orange. Orange. He could draft him. Yes. He decides not to draft him. Whose turn is it? Filler. The filler's turn. You could turn around and look at who's filling it. Are they over the read line or not? You know? No, all right. Let's keep going with this. Uh, here we go. Feed the post. Whose turn is it? Blue. Blue. It's not his turn. It's not his turn to make a move. Now look, if you can throw this player the ball in such a way that this player just catches and shoots, absolutely. Absolutely. But if you throw the ball, if you feed the post, and it's like this, even though it's one-on-one, -on -one, it's not this player's turn. It's the cutter's turn, because this player knows the rule. you got to let the left go. Now, okay, so it's Blue's turn. Now his turn. Now he can make a move. All right? So he decides not to make a move. Whose turn is it? Orange is correct, but not complete. Any of them. All of them. Right. Everybody filling on the perimeter. It's their turn. I mean, why didn't he make a move or she? Why didn't they make a move? Probably because there's help defense down in here. That's the only reason he didn't make a move. That means one of these are going to be open, so it's inside out. All right? Let's do this again from another perspective. This player does not feed the post and passes uphill. Whose turn is it? Is it this player's turn? They can repost. It's orange. See? It's orange's turn. Because when you pass, you must cut. Everyone knows the rule. So this player doesn't repost. This player aids this player. They, they, they scream for this cutter and help them with their turn. Okay? But we didn't throw orange the ball. Whose turn? Red. Now it's his turn. So this helps Black not throw the ball over here because this player hasn't turned. The ball should stick in this case because first it's this guy's turn. It's not open. Then it's this player's turn. They could shape up this way. They could repost this way. And we've got a chance to feed them. If that's not open, then this player is free to make his decision or her decision to go elsewhere and do something else. All right, how about this? Pin, skip. Who's turn? The pin. <coughs> if he doesn't, I say that this player's, that's the first turn. If they don't catch and shoot, right? Then whose turn? Red. Red. Then whose turn? Filler. Right? You got to kind of know whose turn, whose turn it is. Right? Let's see what else. I don't know. Everything else is almost a function of all those, like a ball screen. Circle movement. Circle movement. Okay, this may be too easy, though. This player drives. Whose turn is it? <laughs> it's, it's his turn, right? That's why it's turn. It's his turn to get to the rack, okay? So these players all circle move. They don't get to the rack. Whose turn is it? Okay, you're right. So you want to get, maybe give me an order of whose turn you think it should be? Which one? On the baseline? Oh, red. Absolutely. When red was running, there was an early chance for a layup. Absolutely. That's a great, absolute great point. 
That occurred back, right back here when he just put the ball on the floor, and he probably broke in the yard. There was a chance there for back cutting this player and getting the ball somewhere in here. This player should be long gone by the time this player touches paint. Okay, so that's first. Second, natural pitch. Third, safety valve. If none of those are open, bounce off. Take him up. So we kind of. That's that's really good. That's kind of what I was thinking of coming up with. Part of a diagnostic test, you know, or a certification test, really, which I think you give to players. Do you know whose turn it is? That'll answer whether the ball should stick in your hands and look this way or not. You know, for for instance, players miss this. Look, this player passes, and this player immediately passes too. I don't like that, but you wind up doing like this. <laughs> you know, see if I can do this. You know, two cutters doing this, right? Okay. Many times, this this player misses their turn, and it's their turn. They've got the whole side. Of, they're still looking over here, thinking, "Okay, I need to pay," and they should be driving this. Okay. Okay. So let's say they do, and defense wins, so they bounce off. Whose turn is it? Blue. Get my second screen. Somebody, yeah, that's right. This might come as a double staggered screen, so it's going to be Blue's turn. Or this might come like this, this player first, and then this player gets back screen, this player second. But that way, ball handler had their turn. They didn't make it. Now, none of this over here was false offense. It's just, you're next. we got to know whose turn it is. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Do we localize the tour, the turn? Like, you have the player shout, Johnny, your turn? Or is it? Good, I want to hear it. When I, when I did it first, I had them say, my turn, your turn. Like, so they get, I did it, the one thing is, I had everybody, as soon as they caught the ball, if they caught the ball cleanly, it was their turn. So even if in the post, if you caught it right away, it was your turn trying to teach them that if they're there, if they're playing it that way, it's your turn. Don't just think it's not your turn. But if you don't catch that ball perfectly, you don't catch that and quickly go right to right. Right. So I have for the first turn is I call it the quick turn, and then then it's somebody else's turn. So if you catch the shoot and you you do work, then shoot right. But Ball's over here, you had to reach the right. ball. They right. quickly right. get it right to the right because it's got to go to the next. Not your turn, it's going to be the next. That's yeah. excellent. Just to have them call their turn. Whose turn, right? But it was with younger kids, and I just wanted to get Shoot, them to man, think. Shoot, man, that's good for any age. I had kids in the corner going while they were over the read line. I'm like, you're three spots away. But right. then they were like, oh, well, that's not my turn. They just, those things went away right. because they were like, oh, I could, and they'd come over and tell me, you know, I could cut that person because they were over the read line. They're playing me way over there. Mm -hmm. And you can bring them help in, in too. But it's open for the drive, right? <coughs> player passes, this player cuts. This player's not open. This player has decided not to drive. This player's filling out. Whose turn is it? The filler, the filler's turn. If this, and I see players filling into spots, not understanding it's their turn. They don't look at that as a scoring opportunity. They're not reading the defense. They're not drifting up. Oh, here, here, here we go. I'll do it this way. See if a pass and cut. This player dribbles at this point. Whose turn is it? We all know. Orange's turn, right? Okay. Orange doesn't get the ball. Well, blue, it's their turn. They could have drafted it. But they did. And so they're they're still facing this way. If this player understands that, okay, he's not open and he didn't draft, it's my turn, then this player fills in a much different way than you ordinarily do. 
Why would you feel that in a hurry when the ball can't even see? The ball hasn't turned around yet. Okay, so this player gets over here. You know, he looked at the cutter, looked at this. He can't see the head of the key here. There's no need for you to be there yet. Now, by the time the ball turns around like this, this is why I say on a dribble out like this, you should just drift. Drift slowly so that when the ball turns, and you can drift high, you can drift way further than our spots. Drift listlessly. Like, okay, I guess I've got to be the swing man here. Okay, go ahead, throw me the ball. And sucker this guy, that, even though they've been over the reading line for a while. Why cut when the ball can't see you? But then the ball turns around and you burst. Change of speed and you've got that whole window. Now, did I break a rule there? Well, sort of. You know? He was over the read line way back here. You should have cut, right? But at some point, this is for training. Let's just put it that way. Okay? And I really think the heart of it is this player's got to know when it's his turn or her turn. You know? Uh, on a dribble at, away from you. You're feeling behind a dribble. Why get there early? You know? Why not drift and have a little bit of momentum? A little. Defense is still moving and then go, rather than be here and be static, you know? Anyway. Well, the other thing that does is if blue decides to change direction and drive middle, you know, you've got to be ready to go back. You've got to, so but it also turns around yeah, and it also does takes, this, right? Also takes away one of the one of the helping defenders that would have been there. There is no way for that player to help on that if they're if they've been pull that far out. You're exactly right. I and mean, then this player has got a circle move, but you've got this first natural helping defender, the nail defender. They're out. They're totally out. Uh, it's really good. Really good. Whose turn is it? Take turns with the lane. That'll clean up some of the lane stuff too. Why well, cut in there when it's when it's occupied? You know? Anyway. Right, right, right. Anybody else? Yes, Ron. Well, it's not pretending it is. That's fine. No, let's go. Um, when you're playing pick and roll, yeah, and they're playing an aggressive show or help, um, the, the, the defensive, yeah, whoever's sitting in pick and roll, uh, a lot of let's say it's coming from the high post or you know, okay. whatever, yeah, um. Should, should the screener and I, should the screener be view his guy that's playing aggressive on the on should he view that as a read lines is that a trigger for him to slip the pick and, to slip ah, the screen? Ah, ah, that was ah, my first so this, part. You're saying this player moves out here to set and this player rushes over the read line and get, is getting an aggressive help. And so, is that is that a could that be a trigger for him to slip in second? Right away slip. If if the defensive guys on the screen, like if it was no screen, let's say it was just a dribble penetration, and that guy that was guarding the play one pass away stopped the ball or help, we would immediately pitch it. So my question is, let me make sure I got this right. You're saying that if, you, if he drove right. And that guy one pass away stepped over or tried to stop. We would teach this guy to, to natural pitch it immediately, right? This guy? Yes. Yeah, to make did, your right. natural pitch. Yeah, this guy stops because these are circle moves, right. right? Yeah. So uh, against pick and roll, if if and you see a lot in Europe where that guy will come off the screen and he gets an aggressive or show or trap or hedge, that guy would immediately pitch it. And the next guy would make the play. So oh yes, yes. Oh, I know what's going on. Is that a principle that would break the reading reaction? I don't, habit or? Well, let's see. First of all, if this guy's over the reading, I don't think so, huh? Because this guy. Well, here's the question: Is this guy considered one spot away or two? I don't know. All right. You know. Well, first of all, you can't pitch this if this guy's up here like this. All right. So I would say in your case, the reason that works, that you're, I know exactly, 
I've seen the clips on this, and, and you see it in the NBA some too. The reason this guy can make this pass, so coaches, let me complete what he's saying. They they start to take this pick and roll. So this guy's rolling, right? Mm -hmm. It's sent the roll. But he doesn't worry about throwing. He makes this pitch here. Now, coach, and then this player hits this guy rolling. Right. But the reason that he can make this pitch to the next player is this one is anticipating and helping on the roll. Right? He's, he's the one that's going to catch this, right? So they make this pitch, and he closes out on his man, and it leaves this open. Yes, is that what you're saying? Right, right. I don't think that's a I don't know. I don't, I don't see a problem with that at all. Now, look, if um, if there's a pick and roll, it's starting, he's running up here to set the pick, and this player one spot away, this player's on the rebound. I say he cuts, okay? You might you might get this layup right right here, and then this player can fill, and you're going to fill out, and we'll still take the ball screen and get circle movement. You see a problem with that? I don't know. No, I, mean, I had a kid who you know, he would set the picks, but anytime he felt it was just instinctive, I never showed him. Anytime that guy would step over the read line, this guy, yeah, he would he would automatically slip it, and then that guy on, with the ball. Would treat it just like a dribble penetration. He would just pitch it, and oh, would, yeah. oh, he would then pitch. Yeah, he would pitch it and, and get this. Yeah, uh, I got you. Nice. <laughs> so, I mean, kids. Did. That's real nice. And just use the read line as a signal for this player who's going to set the ball screen. If he's if he notes over his shoulder, this guy's moving up for a a uh, strong hedge, right? Well, then he's over the read line. And I cut. And this guy, yeah, you could throw it over or you could make this pass and let him make it the way they do in Europe, right? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, 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 man, that's you know what that reminds me of is it reminds me of this. Power dribble. Okay. So this so this player. Turns his back, right? Turns his back. Let's see. Let's see. He plays it this way. So he turns his back and he's doing his power dribble, right? This way. Which says, I need you, red player, to fake this and come around and we're going to hand off. I'm going to screen for you and I'm going to roll. Yes? It reminds me of something that they overlook that the moment this player starts to do this, Smart defenders think, okay, I'm going to go hedge. Or, I mean, uh, you know, I'm going to go squeeze. But the moment they step over this green line, you should be going. And this player should be making that, that pass. There's just no way a defender should be even attempting to slip through there because they're over the green line. And the moment they go over, this player should cut. Now, you could keep the power. If you didn't throw it, you keep the power dribble going. This player's going to feel and let them come take the handoff. That's what that kind of reminds me of. Don't forget your reading line. I don't care if any kind of ball screen. Right? I like that. I like that a lot. You also see it on high, on high aggressive <coughs> zones, where your read line is not all the way to the rim because there's still the center or, you know, forward there, but your read line's right there to that to that nail where you create. You create the pressure on the rim. So, right. I mean, a lot of times that's that guard out top will deny the pass back in his own. Right. You got you got to treat that as a rebound. You got to treat, yeah. yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then that on, on the new the new zone attack that, that will be out here soon. We 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 talk about the nail and play. Most already know that we're trying to get the ball against the zone to this player in the nail where the BB is, right, in the logo. And if we can, if we can get that ball there, the center takes and it leaves our short corner, our flank, open to step, oh, to step to the goal and we get a layup because this is a two-on-one right here, okay? 
many times. Okay. And in I show that well the question is, are there any other ways to get a player in here other than passing and cutting? And the read line is one of them. So you're filling and if the ball's here and you're filling an empty spot because someone's already cut through and you're filling and someone denies this up top. Hey, we're going to deny reversal. We're not going to let the ball be reversed. As soon as they go over the read line, I mean, the, the pass to the now is open. I also show that in a curl the puppy dog. It's another way to get them taken. And then you can drive it into the now. So you can pass and cut and get the now. Read line, get the now. Curl the puppy dog, get the now. Drive it and get into the now. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, yeah, even against zones, read line, excellent. Anybody else? Great questions so far. Do you have any from <clears throat> people that are online? No. No? Okay. Good. Good deal. Anybody else? Hey, even if you don't have a question, what about this? We're here at the BGC Glazer Clinic. Give me, because we're about to close out here, give me one... <clears throat> Big thought. You've, been, you've seen a lot of speakers. I know there's like, well, I saw Josh Passner at Georgia Tech, and in his session, there was one thing that he said it was like, oh, thought of the day, right? Oh, that's impactful. Anybody got any of those that they want to share from any of the speakers? I'd say reward the process, not the result, was kind of been a common theme in multiple sessions. Reward the, the process, the learning process of it, versus <coughs> making the bucket or whatever it may be, right? Reward the process of getting to that bucket, not the bucket itself. Exactly, yeah. That's excellent. You saw that in a, several of them? Several, even if they miss it. If they mm -hmm. made the right move, right. reward that, 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 that process to get there to put them in a position to. Right. Oh, I think in practice you should give points. For that. They missed it. Give them more points if they make it. But if they caught the ball and shot the third great shot right here, okay, rather than it's so easy for me to harp on the miss, to let, you know, as an example, it really is. I have to really struggle, you know. I want to stop and lecture. Why didn't you go off with two feet? You got to get the ball in the square. I mean, but look, they got the ball. <laughs> Probably on something you've been working on and got it there. Give them a point. That action. Give them four points if they make the layup or something like that. You know, really, uh, really that's good. Reward the process. Anybody else? I think I think one thing you said was um, having the time to teach and then having the time to allow the players to work through their mistakes and, and that's your time to kind of take your notes and um, fix it later. Don't try to fix it all at one time and kind of knowing what stage your team is, you know, if it's just star and you can't fix every problem. I, I did that my first year. I would stop them and try to fix every problem, but a lot of it is just repetition and it'll get better with time and you just make notes, but you have to let them play through a lot of the mistakes, you know, especially the small ones. You know, I'm afraid some coaches think they're they're giving is it implicit approval of bad play when they don't say something, and and you're not. You just I think you got to get over that. That look, this is a process. You're going to clean that up later, but just be quiet and and let them kind of play and get a feel for it and make a mistake without a consequence. Other than well. You turn the ball over and it's going the other way. <clears throat> I think that's good. Yeah. I wanna yes, sir, coach. Hey, Jesse McMillan's uh, from a macro level, his emphasis on and his various methodologies, various many methodologies yeah. of developing both the player and the person and all his systems that he has in place of rewards yep. and you know consequences of impact. So he's really on those two paths of not only am I a coach teaching the X's and O's, but I'm also, you know, developing a person. Right. And and also that quote, um, 
not related to the pop psychology, but that Billy Graham wrote a uh, quote that uh, a coach can do for a player more in one year than most people can do. Oh, a coach impacts more people in one year than the average person does in their entire lifetime. Absolutely. Boy, if that doesn't put uh, some pressure, it gives, pressure them, it gives on it. some perspective on this. A little, a little larger. Gives a little, but absolutely so true. Easily, easily. Coming at 18, I could have answered that. Tell me the two people in your life that's influenced my, my father and my basketball coach. Gee whiz. Hey, there were years where the basketball coach got more of my time than dad did. My dad's working a swing shift at DuPont and running a farm. You know, there were weeks I didn't see him because he's working a swing shift. You know, he's working at nights. Saw my coach every day during school and two hours after school. You know? And, man, the responsibility that we got to uh, uh, build a person and the player at the same time. That was excellent. That was who? Je uh, Jesse McNone. Jesse McNone. Norcross. Yeah. That is excellent. That is a, by the way, you reminded me of something. I was talking to <clears throat> a coach uh, at a break, and we were talking about you know building building the players up and that kind of thing. What what does the reader at give you that maybe other systems don't? And here's one I don't say enough. It's a chance for a thousand tiny successes that you can stroke players on. They don't even have to touch the ball. Man, you can say, you know something? For that two minutes you were in there, you filled your, your empty spot perfectly. Your basket cuts were game-like. They set up Joe and Jill and da 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 You know something? When you rent, I mean, you could stroke. Every time the ball moves, it's a five-player movement. And there's a chance that all five did something successful. And you could Now, I'm stealing this from a guy. Who, who first brought this to my attention? He he was coaching a church league introductory course. To, I mean, like this is a basketball to little kids. Okay, <laughs> that kind of thing. All right, I'm serious. And he said he was there. You know the little gold stars you put on created all kinds of those. To say. This star goes for filling your empty spots. Did that? You know this star. Is for a basket cut, and this hey, he gave stars for catching the ball successfully. <laughs> I'm serious; it was just hilarious hearing him break this down. <clears throat> and I thought we've got so many chances to stroke people positively, you know. And, uh, and, and we talk about all for the team stuff, and yet it seems like most attention goes to those that score the baskets, gets the steals. Hey, most of my steals after 20 years, I began to note that it wasn't the kid that got the stat and the steal. Somebody deflected it. It was deflections we should have been charting as an example. You know, it was that kind of thing. You know, uh, and redirect just kind of gives you that chance to to uh, fill up that that player's uh, bucket of positives that they need every day. That's probably a great place to. Uh, in the uh, in the webinar in the Q and A, coaches, I appreciate you joining us online. Really wished you were at PGC Glazer because man, they have a lineup. This might be the best lineup so far I've seen. Uh, when when you look at, at well, I mean, just the quality of the speakers and the uh, the uh, subjects that they they've been covering, this just gets better and better every year. So. Next time, hope you join us. We got another one in Dallas. Is that and Dallas and Los Angeles at the same time? Is it this weekend? This coming two weekends from now. Hope you can join us. Thanks. Bye.